Mr. Fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. Uh, friends, attention, can anybody hear me? I do! I hear you! Help me! It appears I've gone blind! Hey, you're not the only one. Not the only one? What is this, an epidemic? <laughs> We're doomed! Doomed! Larry, stop it! No one's gone blind! It's just that thing that buzzed and gave us light is no longer buzzing! The generator! That was... Our generator. Uh. No big deal. Now we just need to find an alternative source of light. I've already found one. <laughs> Before they turned the light off, I was doing a crossword where one of the clues was alternative source of light, ten letters, flashlight. Ha! Excellent. Now it would be good if we could find one in real life. To heck with this flashlight. Pin will be able to fix everything and we'll be all hunky-dory. Well, uh, I'll try. There you go. Consider it fixed already. When Pin sets out to fix something... Hey! My gut! Ah! Pin, what's happened to Pin? Oh, Pin. Oh, I'm okay. I just got electrocuted a little bit. Let me just rest a little and then we'll continue. My friend, I think one try is more than enough. But it did almost work, and it even became brighter for a while, and no flashlights were even needed. <laughs> Crash, tell us what you've done with the flashlights. And why is it always Crash? Anything at all could have happened to them. Crash and I were playing Star Wars. We needed to have lightsabers. Yeah, we were playing. What else is there to do here? Bumping around, you understand? Around this Venus, neither here nor there, near or far, and nowhere, you know? So what happened to the flashlights? What do you mean? You know how quickly these lightsabers need fixing? Like, almost immediately. All right, we know what happened to the flashlights then. I seem to recall we also had some candles. Uh-huh, you remembered the candles. But you forgot about my birthday last month, didn't you? I don't see the connection. You put candles into the birthday girl's cake, then you light them, make a wish, and blow them out. It's kind of a tradition, you know. But you still have candles left. You do if you only have one wish. If you make a lot of wishes, you relight them, and then make more wishes. All right, we know what happened to the candles, too. Any other suggestions, then? Well, all that's left to do is wait until our eyes adjust to the dark, then. Nato! Is that a superpower of yours or something? Not just for me. In today's world, we've become accustomed to lighting everywhere and for everything. As soon as we stumble across some kind of dark corner, we're tripping over ourselves to install a lamp and shed more light there. But it wasn't always that way. Our ancestors were dependent on natural sources of light and therefore lived half their lives in the dark. And of course, nature made sure to supply us with the necessary organs for sight. In the human eye, there are approximately 130 million cells reacting to light. In bright light, only about 7 million of them work. These are called cone cells. All of the rest, over 120 million of them, are called rods. We use them in low lighting. To activate a cone, you need a few hundred photon particles. But for a rod, just one photon is enough. 
But if we have over 120 million of these rod thingies, we should be able to see in the dark really good. Ho <laughs> ho Of course we should, if we allow the eye to get used to the dark. When we turn off the lights in the brightly lit room, at first we can't make anything out at all. But five minutes later, the eye's sensitivity to light increases by 30%. To completely become adjusted to the dark can take up to approximately three hours. But you can speed this process up by breathing deeply and increasing oxygen to the brain. Vision will adjust to the dark more quickly. Another option is to rinse the face and back of the neck with cold water. Or eat something sweet. Anything with vitamin A will do. For example, carrots. I don't even know which option I would choose. Uh, hey! Ah! Something just touched me! What was it? Uh, a thousand pardons. Th that was me. It's just you were so quiet and I was a little disoriented. We were waiting for our eyes to get used to the dark. Where were you? When the lights went out, I was in the laboratory. I was researching that substance which we found on Venus. I didn't have time to get all the analyses results back, but it looks like we found this solar system's first living organism. Cool. Is this thing dangerous at all? Huh, not likely. We're talking about utterly tiny microorganisms. But what if they grow in the darkness and start silently moving around the sphere jet? Crash, stop it. Hmm. Well, that would be a very interesting scientific phenomenon. So it could actually be possible. Generally, of course, it's unlikely. But it's still possible. Friends, let's not work ourselves into a panic. Daco undoubtedly closed the doors to the laboratory, so in any case, we're completely out of harm's way. Well, actually, those laboratory doors don't close. You mean... That thing could already be out here with us? Quiet! Did anybody else hear that strange sound? What is that? I don't like that noise at all. It sounds like claws scraping along the wall. What kind of claws on the wall? We're in zero gravity. And what if this thing can move along the walls, even without any gravity? Are you are you worried about the scratching sound? <laughs> Those are my knitting needles. Just a few more loops and I'll stop, I promise. It was just knitting? <laughs> 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 and we thought it was And we thought it was Oh, well, it's yeah. great that we explained that and that <laughs> this thing from Venus probably only exists in our minds. And what were we scared of? In this darkness, it'd be just as helpless as we are. <laughs> well, about that, I'm afraid I can't agree. Some animals, as a result of difficult habitation requirements, have become accustomed to relying not just on their vision. Take the shark, for example which spends a good portion of its time in the dark. Sharks compensate for the lack of visibility with magnificent olfactory skills. They are extremely sensitive to smells and can sense their prey from considerable distances. Other underwater inhabitants like crocodiles for the same purposes use very sensitive whiskers capable of sensing vibrations in the water from dozens of meters away from the source. Other types of animals, such as several types of snakes, use thermolocation. This is the name for the ability to distinguish in open areas items with different temperatures. It's extremely helpful in complete darkness. But it's probably bats, which have the best help. They emit an audio signal which reflects off surrounding objects and returns. The bat catches these waves and creates a picture of the surrounding area with almost the same precision as we do with light. This trait is called echolocation. So you mean something can see us? 
when we can't see anything at all? Well, theoretically, you can't exclude that possibility. Olga, hey, can you stop for a minute from all your knitting? That constant scratch scratch sound is getting to me. I finished ages ago. <laughs> oh, something's touching me again. This time it's not me. Oh, something just touched me too. It's the thing! It's here! It's among us! It's watching us! Nobody and it's panic. scraping! I am almost fully adjusted to the dark! I can see him! Yeah, yeah! I see it too! It has tentacles! Oh, mercy me! We'll just catch it then! Chico, go around to its left! Okay, uh, where is that? Don't use any violence. This might be an intelligent being. Let's not embarrass all of Earth. Be careful. It might not be sterile. Let me out of here or I'll definitely embarrass something. Ha! Ah, I got him. Ah, something's got me. Ah. My diplomatic friends, please try to avoid starting any intergalactic scandals. I've got it by the tentacles. Oh, who's here? Uh, what the heck's going on? Stay calm! Hey! No! That's my ear! Sphere jet systems activated. Energy source, solar power. Switching to artificial gravity. <laughs> this thing from Venus. Where is it? Oh, it ran off back to the world of fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we won't be embarrassed before any of our fellow intelligent space beings. That's for sure, my friend. That's for sure. Mmm. Mmm.